Thank you, Ranjitji. Uh, again, I would like to thank uh, Ranjit and his old team for organizing such an interesting and relevant collaborative approach. And uh, I'm very honest in sharing my experience. I have just seen this invitation, I think 15 minutes before due to my busy schedule. So even though I cannot register my temptation to join this, so that is why immediately I posted my that uh, uh, inability to see the that the invitation and uh, inform Arti I am available. So I have not prepared any presentation. I will just uh, share my uh, views because there are many development happening in UP. So regarding uh, whatever you have introduced, I just want to update. And now my medical college name is renamed by the government of UP as Rani Durgavati Medical College, uh, Banda UP, number one. Uh, you have introduced me as an editor, ex-editor uh, that was passed. After that, I was elected as General Secretary, Indian Academy of Forensic Medicine from 2019 to 2022 and recently in February, I have been elected as president of Indian Academy of Forensic Medicine yes, for 2022 sir. to 2025. This is just uh, a correction. Yes, sir. We, and we, the, yes. the topic, very relevant topic. Yes, sir. Not yes. only for forensic science person, but also for forensic medicine and the whole criminal justice system. And yes. if you remember, you were the part of our team in that uh, organizing that national conference in Golden Jubilee year of Sanjay Gandhi. Uh, we kept the, this uh, theme, reforms in criminal justice system, role of Indian Academy of Forensic Medicine. So on behalf of IFM, again, I remind, I just uh, taken this as a theme by, because there is a need for amendment in the criminal justice system. We have constituted a team of expert of IFM members. We submitted a detailed report on what uh, amendments are needed at present uh, by the Home Ministry and they have been submitted to the concerned authorities for incorporation in the I, this uh, criminal procedure code. As most of you are aware that the uh, admissibility of this happening of uh, postmortem is part of uh, one section 174, 75 and 176 CRPC. And admissibility of this as a for conviction or even acquittal, we are forgetting when we talk about the conviction this report is also important for in acquittal of innocent person. So from that point of view, since I have not prepared my slide, I'm just uh, uh, discussing based upon my experience. Uh, in conviction, especially in cases of homicide, suicide, and assault cases, the purpose of postmortem report, because uh, this is the duty of the investigating officer as per the CRPC 174, he has to decide whether postmortem is needed or not. And we have to be based upon that request, uh, conduct the postmortem report. Similarly, there are cases of alleged criminal negligence deaths happening in hospital or during treatment. There is a judgment of Honorable Supreme Court uh, in Jacob Matthew versus Union of India 2005, which has given detailed guidelines when to file FIR against uh, alleged victim of that uh, or doctor for criminal medical negligence and without medical opinion of the board of doctor, including postmortem report by a board of doctor is not admissible uh, uh, or even not allowing uh, anybody to file FIR. And uh, due to lack of awareness on this issue, recently, if you are aware, uh, a case happened in the Rajasthan quota where one of the doctor, leading uh, practitioner and gold medalist, Dr. Archana Sarma, uh, whose husband is also psychiatrist, committed suicide after this allegation of uh, criminal negligence death. Although this was a case of PPH, which is where death is usually happen as per the medical literature available. But since nobody is aware of these uh, guidelines of Supreme Court, uh, police officers in uh, of that jurisdiction, they filed uh, FIR under section 302, can you imagine, against a doctor. And under that pressure, uh, see that a lady committed suicide and put in the suicide note the reason for committing the suicide. 
so this is the talk of the whole india now uh, on these issues importance of post mortem report or this uh, need for amendment in crpc 174 75 176 there are guidelines of national human right commission also uh, since uh, 2009 regarding especially post mortem protocol in cases of custodial death or encounter death because this is now happening uh, very frequently nowadays due to political pressure many cases are pending before the honorable supreme court so from that point of view uh, what is important what is the re uh, relevance or evidentiary value of post mortem report it is just a medical opinion or medical evidence for the court and it is not admissible till the person who has made this report come to the court for examination in chief cross examination and re examination and after that court admit that report then the same medical opinion become the court opinion as per the supreme court judgment <coughs> there are many pil have been filed recently on these issues and supreme court from time to time it has given direction regarding admissibility also uh, a big question regarding the who can perform this post mortem report technically expert is the only forensic medicine md uh, candidate maybe uh, pg senior resident faculty maybe assistant professor associate or professor as per prevailing rule but as per the crpc 174 they have mentioned the word registered medical practitioner that means any registered medical practitioner having mbbs degree and registered with the state medical council or medical council of india or now nmc is entitled to perform the post mortem uh, examination and you see during the mbbs curriculum because these are the issues which are nobody knows especially from uh, non medical faculty or even forensic science person that is why i am emphasizing on these issues that during uh, this uh, forensic medicine uh, curriculum which is previously taught in second professional examination for one and half year which after our representation and lot of hue and cry uh, now nmc agree to include this subject starting from the first year till the fourth year that means uh, uh, second professional part 2 phase 2 why because the at that time those mbbs student are able to know the actual importance of the post mortem or medico legal one so these are the new amendment in the nmc act 2019 and medical this is standard regulation of nmc recently published and again are in process of reform because drafts are now circulated the issue is who will perform when the person who is not expert rmp means mbbs doctor who has just exposure of few uh, months just to supervise just visit in post mortem to see the post mortem report or post mortem examination and there are no expert available to perform the post mortem examination infrastructure is not available technician trained are not available forensic scientist which are supposed to be part of this team as per the recent uh, judgment of the madras high court uh, they have given direction ki forensic scientist should be part of this team because they are available and now because many forensic science universities are awarding this degree still that has not been implemented that is why i am raising these issues because i have published paper on this issue so uh, until unless a expert is not performing post mortem report usually court has uh, reason to disbelieve whether they are and again you know in criminal cases conviction is only possible when thing is proved beyond reasonable doubt what does it mean it means then where never there is a reasonable doubt about the cause of death court is going in favor of acquittal rather than conviction so it is a great injustice to real victim of crime where death occur either due to accidental suicidal or homicidal or pretended accidental by, while they may be homicidal as you know criminals are very not notorious 
So from that point of view, first thing which we should raise as a collaborative approach, experts should perform the postmortem at least homicidal and suicidal or at least custodial cases where Supreme Court has given direction, where National Human Rights Commission has also given direction, number one. Now again, the question is uh, why this is not happening. Even if in medical colleges where there is a full-fledged medical department, forensic medicine, experts are available till that for a professor. But uh, you know, 50% medical college as on today, out of more than 500 are government medical college, rest 50% are private medical college. So in many states, private medical college has not been permitted to perform the postmortem examination. This is again a great legal lacuna which has to be amended or taken care by the Home Ministry and other concerned ministry, which we have demanded through a forum of Indian Academy of Forensic Medicine. Again, in government medical college, say for example, I am from UP, uh, uh, we have given many representation. Even government medical college are not given permission to perform the postmortem examination, where full fledged qualified permanent and contractual, both faculties are available. So this is, uh, I just want to inform all uh, these uh, audience which are attending this uh, collaborative, uh, this uh, CME, ki, uh, you should raise uh, voice whenever you possible or just start discussing. Then it become a public opinion. So government will take seriously to amend these things. And ultimately for the purpose of criminal justice system is to give justice to the needy. Maybe uh, innocent uh, uh, accused, which can be acquitted, or a actual victim of crime, we should get justice in the form of conviction of real accused. So, uh, as per prevailing practice or legal position under Indian Evidence Act, until unless the report which is submitted to the prosecution is not deposed by the appearing before the court, and when opportunity given to the opposite party for cross-examination, it is not admissible. It is only an opinion, mere opinion of the doctor because doctor is not direct witness to the crime. The reason behind it is he is not direct. He is giving opinion based upon whatever he, he see with his experience on the body, especially injury or rupture of organ or vital organ. And based upon that, he will give opinion regarding the cause of death. So the main importance of postmortem examination is to give the cause of death, time since death, and identification of the victim if it is unknown body or unclaimed body, because uh, this migratory population, anybody gone to any other place, may be kidnapped and killed there, and body thrown in either in water or at the railway track or maybe on the road and pretended to be a case of accident or accidental drowning. Many cases are happening. So where uh, doctor is not direct witness. So he, the body comes to mortuary. Whenever an uh, expert forensic medicine is doing, he will take care of all the legal points. And only if the MBBS doctor is doing, who has no exposure even having, uh, just performing even 10 or 20 postmortem, he is considered as expert by the court of law uh, as per the prevailing CRPC. So, Whenever there is a doubt raised by the opposite party, because it is a case against the state, they give benefit of doubt to the accused side and acquittal happen. And that is why conviction rate, rate is very little in spite of postmortem report available, especially in blind cases where there is no eyewitness. This importance of postmortem report is very relevant. That is why in custodial death, uh, you remember uh, there was a murder of a CMO in uh, that uh, one of the scam of UP, Dr. Sachan. And uh, I have uh, read uh, through news item, uh, one of the pharmacists of the jail, he given a statement before the court recently when the case come for the trial uh, after so many years. He, there was a scalpel present in the dispensary, taken by the DG and IG team visiting the jail and asked that pharmacist to go out from this, we want to discuss something personal. 
according to his statement recorded in the court of law that scalpel was missing when he come to the pharmacy uh, that uh, dispensary of the jail and uh, that was recovered at the scene of crime or where that uh, dr sachan committed so called suicide by uh, that uh, uh, committing this uh, uh, that cut in the uh, that neck and there was a belt leather belt also present in that toilet body was found inside the toilet full of pool of blood and as per jail manual that is not permissible so this was a blind case where there, there is no witness and it is a case of custodial death after so many years after the statement of uh, this uh, pharmacist maybe uh, since the verdict has not come till date but this will discredit the post mortem report if it is mentioned ki it is a case of suicide now all the evidence including this eye witness who has the weapon of offense recovered this shows that it is a case of homicide not uh, suicide similarly case if you remember case of arushi murder case very prevalent uh, and again nithari murder case all these cases or that indra sahani murder case where post mortem report play a very important role in conviction of the accused in indra sahani case first autopsy report found no bullet inside the skull and when second post mortem has been committed x ray has been done as per the protocol because second is done under the supervision of the court or direction of the cbi and there was a bullet recovered inside the skull as per the judgment of the court and ultimately conviction has been given to that high profile uh, politician so these are some of the cases similarly cases of dowry death where female is alone all the accused they are from uh, in law side so there is nobody to say in her favor and uh, again 2008 the agya supreme the high court has given direction ki what should the protocol for performing post mortem in asphyxial death and where court said it is only forensic medicine expert to perform the post mortem at least in these sensitive cases uh recent case of again i am not um, want to make it as a political statement but this is the case of whether it is a udaipur case where uh, a murder has been done uh, maybe due to hate speech or whatever it is by slicing the neck and other amputation of organ so these are the cases where nobody is present as eye witness except that a small video post mortem report play a great role so my simple request through this pro, uh, this platform of collaborative approach because uh, this uh, conviction or acquittal is not a individual one it is a team work where forensic scientists play a great role say for example if it is a case of death due to poisoning we preserve the viscera we preserve the sample sent to the forensic science laboratory where only forensic science lab uh, scientists uh perform all the test and give their opinion whether visra having any poison or not if suppose those forensic scientists are not uh, eligible not qualified there are many which have been appointed in many forensic science laboratory and they give opinion that there is no uh, that uh, poison detected there are many reasons for non detection of poison say for example whatever they perform that may not be part of that uh, uh, essay or investigation kyunki usme tha hi nahi kit testing facility us poison ko jo usko diya gaya tha so the report will say negative and post mortem uh, clinical suppose patient admitted in the hospital where all the clinical finding are in favor of uh, poisoning so here controversy arises clinical findings are in favor of uh, poisoning and uh, doctor is sufficient to say ki, yes it is a case based upon their clinical judgment and experience it is a case of death due to poisoning there is history available there is evidence of uh, recovery of that poison in the scene of crime and the post mortem report after receiving this uh, forensic science laboratory report has to say something about the forensic science laboratory if there is no poison detected so cause of death cannot be ascertained 
so uh, in spite of everything good due to that lack of qualified and experienced person um, patient that uh, accused will become uh, acquitted so these are some of the instances which uh, with this short time i may be able to explain to you so my sincere request is it should be a team work now um, every district after supreme court direction has been given a mobile forensic science uh, uh, unit which has a mobile van along with team of uh, forensic scientists and police investigation and supposed to be scene of crime visited by the forensic medicine expert on because say for example if it is a case of uh, alleged suicide and point of suspension and plate fob available at the scene of crime is not matching what does it mean ki agar patient ki height jo bhi hai aur wo wahan se bina platform use kiye uh, point of suspension pe not nahi laga sakta hai so how it is possible without help of third person to get hanged that person or strangulated that person that is why scene of crime visit is also important part as a team of forensic science forensic medicine expert investigating officer and photographer or then again many thing other uh, important point which uh, making disinterest of the forensic medicine expert or even any doctor performing these medical legal post mortem is a uh, problem faced by uh, that doctor in visit of the court now uh, punjab haryana high court or many even supreme court has now started e courts so there is a provision of video conferencing the whole covid be managed through the video conferencing even treatment we managed icu be managed through the video conferencing why that technology cannot be used by having because an ic center is in every district now we are having almost uh, every month or weekly uh, video conferencing with the chief minister so why court cannot use this video conferencing to not what is the benefit because there is a research done in pgi chandigarh also and punjab and haryana high court available on punjab haryana high court website ki there is lot of saving of time in traveling to and fro from court to the place of posting there is lot of saving of the tada and there is no problem in quality if a proper uh, this video conferencing room is provided in every forensic medicine department of the medical college because now the government policy is to open one medical college in each district current government policy and up is now having more than 45 medical college and within uh, few uh, year we have at least 75 medical college in each district that means every district have a for one forensic medicine department where morchi is compulsory as per the nmc norm everything is there so why to perform this post mortem in district morchi where there is no facility no infrastructure no expert available even after our representation uh, there is a sanction of two forensic medicine expert in each district and again government had uh, advertised them and uh, out of uh, previous, uh, first time they advertised only 75 people out of 75 only 30 two candidate appeared in the up public service commission out of 32 only 25 uh, have been declared their result as final result or out of those only six joined so this is the scenario this is the right time to introspect why they have not joined what is the problem because they are not giving getting due infrastructure due support in the form of tada uh, proper respect in the court which is again supreme court has given direction in a daily pil the doctor should be given adequate time they should be called when the patient or clinical work is open after 2 pm and they should be given priority in recording their evidence in before the court these are the supreme court orders supreme court has also given direction ki post mortem should be given conducted by only forensic medicine expert uh, we are having enough post graduate seats if you remember uh, recent judgment of the supreme court where many student gone to the court 1456 seats remain vacant 1456 
of pre and para clinical supreme court has given direction to the nmc and central government to the all state government need to introspect why these seats are lying vacant it is a national laws on one side we are sending our student to the ukraine russia and their future is jeopardized our money is going to the other country and we are not able to fill the seats so these are important recent development of what we can call problem and challenges so say for example myself uh, for the first time our is a new medical college it started in 2016 i am a new principal there are already uh, 45 medical colleges uh, so again i would like to highlight one important point king george medical university which is the pioneer in starting md forensic medicine in 1957 just note down 1957 and what is the status of pg in forensic medicine only one seat what is the status of gsb medical college kanpur from where i did my md only one seat what is the status in agra asm medical college old medical college even before the independence one seat and my new medical college i am a new principal i entered newly uh, because i most of the time i served in the private medical college where i started post mortem i applied for this uh, md forensic medicine got three seats in first attempt and government is still not giving permission to start post mortem uh, examination by our faculty because that is under uh, crpc me likha civil surgeon सिविल सर्जन की पोस्ट ही बहुत से मेडिकल कॉलेज में नहीं है स्टेट्स में नहीं है हमारी स्टेट में दैट पोस्ट इज कॉल्ड सी एम ओ चीफ मेडिकल सो दैट इज वाई देर इज नीड फॉर रिफॉर्म नीड फॉर अमेंडमेंट इन सी आर पी सी टू गिव लीगल वैलिडिटी टू दिस अगेन यू रिमेंबर अंडर वन ऑफ द सेक्शन ऑफ सी आर पी सी फॉरेंसिक साइंसिस्ट रिपोर्ट इज एडमिशेबल इवन विदाउट कॉलिंग फॉर क्रॉस एग्जामिनेशन बट फॉरेंसिक मेडिसिन एक्सपर्ट Uh, report is needed only after calling them say for example example of road traffic accidents where there is a witness i witnesses yes it is a case of road traffic accident and post mortem report is also saying same and supreme court judgment has in one of the case said this why there is a need to call doctor to deny their services to the needy patient or for the administrative work to the court when it is a clear cut case of road traffic accident where uh, motor vehicle act or tribunal has to give some compensation to them why not affidavit evidence is admissible as a evidence before the court of law why i am saying because maximum cases of accident where even mbbs doctor can perform or where there is just evidence uh, that affidavit evidence is admissible as a court of Uh, this evidence uh, in the court of law so by saving that time to sensitive cases to homicide cases to suicide cases we can perform quality work quality of forensic medicine uh, post mortem examination because there is a shortage of forensic medicine expert as on today but when you see that number of pg seats they are enough when only two year all uh, these forensic md seats are filled up is an expert in india but nobody is working on that even nmc is not working on that so that is why i am again through this collaborative approach want to highlight ki uh, whatever your resources your contact you just convey this because forensic medicine uh, role in post mortem is very important along with team of forensic scientists they should be posted as a technician in assisting the post mortem in all the medical college this will give job opportunity to yourself uh, forensic scientist and this will give help to the forensic medicine expert in assisting the post mortem examination and giving quality medical evidence or quality medical opinion definitely that will help in increasing the conviction rate whenever there is a increased conviction rate trust of the arm uh, that uh, common man in 
criminal justice system going to improve and when they will going to improve obviously they will believe our this judiciary system and whenever there is a belief the frustration of either criminal many murder and homicide or the accident or suicide even nowadays are out of frustration because they are not having money to reach the court uh, yesterday statement of our honorable chief justice if you remember and the law minister kiran rijju pendency of cases quality of uh, this conviction and he himself proposed ki why we supreme court judges or anybody can't approach uh, can't attend the court uh, at 9:30 when the protocol is they start uh, hearing at 10:30 this is the right time to introspection just by increasing one hour court proceeding you will be able to uh, reduce this pendency which is a great cause of concern because it is a popular saying justice delayed is justice denied so when you give timely uh, this uh, conviction or kind of fast track trial uh, obviously system uh, faith of the public in criminal justice system is bound to increase so many thing i may not be able to cover so just ask your question i may be able to answer your question and i request the ranjit to please make a collaborative approach to fight for these amendments because your team your commitment your dedication your team dedication is very much relevant and accepted by all of us thank you thank you very much